Hey, it's Tom here at the lot this morning. Just grabbed some steaks out of the dumpster over there. Been getting a lot of good stuff out of that dumpster. Kind of like that it's there. I need to stake out some stuff on the lot this morning. I'm actually meeting with the arborist here in a few minutes because we're going to talk about that beautiful tree and what we got to do to make sure it's protected during the construction of this house. While we will have solar on this house, the tree actually provides passive solar. So shading, and it's on the western side of the house, so shading at the end of the day when we'd be getting a lot of heat gain from that low sunlight. So that's the plan. Chris Barney Castle, the arborist, will be here in about an hour. So I've got a little time to play in the dirt here and uh, until he arrives. All right. Let me get to it. Let me introduce you to Chris Barney Castle. He is of Barney Castle Forestry Services, right? That's correct. And that means that Chris knows a lot about trees. So how long have you been in the business? I've been a forester for a little over 30 years and been in arboriculture uh, for about 12 years. Okay. So Chris is out here today to tell us if we can keep this oak tree, and if we should. We don't want to protect a tree that's going to die in five years. It is going to affect the design of the house, but we do want to keep it because it's so majestic. Chris, let's go take a look. All right. So what kind of oak tree do we have here? I know that much. I know it's an oak. Very good. This is a water oak, um, and you can tell by this uh, small, uh, actually they call it a spatula shaped leaf and uh, pretty uh, easy to identify a water oak from that leaf. Okay, we're going to measure the diameter of this tree. Um, this is called a diameter tape. And using some uh, high school ge geometry, we take the circumference and this converts it to a diameter and uh, looks like it's 33 and a half or round it to 34 inches in diameter. I checked it with this dead blow hammer to listen for any um, heart rot, which is basically means it might be hollow, but it, this one sounds solid as a rock, and that's pretty typical with water oaks. Um, these are the buttress roots. Uh, they sound good and solid. I don't see any sign of uh, root disease which is something I really look for and it, it, it scares me when I see it because those are the trees that can look perfectly healthy but if they have uh, root disease they just don't have any uh, structural roots at the base that are, that are good so the tree can uh, fall over. But I don't see any signs of that. Um, the crown looks good. Of course it's a little more difficult in the winter. I see live buds. These live buds being something that would be a sign of a healthy tree. Correct. Here, Even here in winter, we've got uh, the beginnings of leaves forming on the tree. So this tree has good shape. It's got one central uh, main stem. A lot of trees have what's called co-dominant stems, and that's a structural defect. In other words, they'll have a, a, a main stem that'll split into two or three stems and that's that can be a problem sort of like this tree over here right that that yes. big oak has got about yeah. 20 feet up it's got three it has some dead limbs and that's uh from a natural aging process for trees uh, kind of like people as we get older <laughs> you know we have problems as trees get older they start declining a little bit but uh, this tree is actually, even though it's 34 inches in diameter, it's probably a fairly young water oak. Huh, uh, really? It might be 40, 50 years old. Really? Yeah. The lifespan of a water oak, just to let you know, Tom, is, is about 80 years old. They don't live quite as long as like a white oak. Okay. Um, but this one's probably got 30, 40 more years. I mean, that's the average lifespan. It could live to be a, a hundred. But yeah, it looks like a very healthy uh, water oak. Let me show you kind of what we're thinking about in terms of the footprint of the house. And um, and you can kind of tell me what, what your thoughts are sure. on that. And these are just basic stakes here. Down by the tripod down there, you can see that front stake. 
and then this back stake here, that's where the house would be at its widest. Okay. And then, um, then we move across, and I hadn't nailed it in yet, but there's one laying down over here. So this stake would be kind of as far back as the house would go. Okay. But in its more narrow portion. So that's about 50 feet deep from the front line, which is down where you can see the tape running across the lot. For air, air space, this limb that comes out right here, I was thinking about taking that off, and then that, that larger one that, that kind of goes up at a 40 degree angle there, that kind of comes out into that air space. Perhaps taking those two off, and maybe this low one here. Yeah, those, those are pretty large limbs to be removing, but I, I think that won't harm the tree. Uh, it's gonna leave, you would actually need to cut the limb all the way back to the main stem. Right. The rule of thumb is you don't want to uh, cut a limb more than six inches in diameter because it's probably not going to callus over and close uh, up. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's that's the rule of thumb. Uh, that's about a, it's probably about a it's 10 or 10 12 inch, inch yeah, at, the, at, at, at the base. But, you know, you when you're building a house, you got to do what you got to do. The other thing I always recommend is that you have tree work on a live tree, any pruning, that type of work done by a certified arborist. Right. Uh, well, we're calling you. Or you can you can come down here on the, you'll be on the ground, you can tell me what to do. I'll get up there. Exactly. Yeah, I, I tell homeowners all the time, uh, you want your pruning either performed by or supervised by a certified arborist. What if I got up in the tree and did the cutting and well, you just tell me what to do? Well, you better be real careful. <laughs> well, what I mean what, with your supervision? Oh, absolutely. Like a layman such as yourself can prune uh, limbs as long as uh, as long as you've read about it or, or have somebody supervising you. That, right. I want to be as hands-on on this project as I can, for the purpose of saving money, perhaps, but also for the purpose of learning. I mean, want to I want to understand. We talked about critical root zone, which is uh, a circle that would have a radius of one foot for every inch of diameter, so that this tree is a 34 inch diameter tree, so the critical root zone would go out 34 feet. You don't want to impact any more than about 20 percent of the critical root zone. So that circle, that that pie, you don't want to cut in right. to it uh, more than 20 percent, and it looks like the where the location of your house is going to be, uh, you're not going to be impacting it too much, because if you get more than 20 percent, then the, you're, you're basically taking 20% of the root system, so that means 20% of the crown may, may go as well. Right. One thing that most people don't realize is tree roots go way out, but they don't go way down. Believe it or not, the roots of this tree at the deepest are probably about two feet under the ground. Right, so okay. So you don't have to go down very far at all to start impacting uh, tree roots. The reason they don't go any deeper th than that is they're looking for oxygen and in our clay soils they get down to 18 or 24 inches there's there's no oxygen or not a, enough. So with fill dirt if you put six inches of fill dirt well all of a sudden you put those those roots down if they're 18 inches all of a sudden now they're 24 inches or if they're 24 inches, they're 30 inches. And mm -hmm. so fill dirt's real deceiving. Uh, doesn't take but a little bit to smother the roots. Interesting. I, never, I would never have thought about the fact that they need air too. Yeah. Is this tree worth saving? I believe it is. Saving your trees. That's one thing that makes a greenhouse green. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for new videos weekly. The Green Shorts Greenhouse, uncovering what makes a greenhouse green.